You calm the storm that surrounds me With just one word The darkness has to retreat With just one touch I feel the presence of heaven Just one touch my eyes were open to see My heart can't help but believe There's nothing that our God can't do There's not a mountain that He can't move Oh, praise the name that makes a way There's nothing that our God can't do With just one word You feel what's broken inside There's not a mountain that he can move. Oh, praise the name that takes away. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a prison wall he can't break through. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do. Greater things, there's not a power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like the Power of Jesus, I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like a power. There's nothing that our God can't do. It's not a mountain that He can't move. Oh, praise the name. Welcome. Bless that you guys are all with us today, here and online. And uh, Michael had a great word this morning as we were praying. The joy of the Lord is our strength. 
It's our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of um, waking up in the morning and seeing the sunrise is awesome. And the joy of seeing your kids and grandkids grow up and, and especially having your kids move away and uh, so you don't have to pay their bills anymore. <clears throat> All that's good stuff. But truly, the joy of the Lord Jesus Christ is what sustains us day in and day out as we're thankful and we, we look to him uh, for our sustenance, for our daily lives. So today, that's what we're here for, to, to express our joy in the Lord Jesus. So let's just uh, let him know how much we love him and let everybody around us know how, how much he means to us. Just that, This part of worship is it's, it's us to God, but it's also when people hear us sing, around us singing and, and worshiping, and it encourages the church, too. It builds us up as, as well, right? So let's go ahead and go for it today. <laughs>
I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of glory died. My riches gain, I count but lost and poor contempt on all my pride. See from his head, his hands, his Sorrow and love flow mingle down. Did there such love and sorrows be? Or thorns compost so?
just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind as I know there is healing in your presence I speak Jesus
Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy and Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus Sing it as a prayer Thou Jesus on the mountains and Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak Your name is healed. Your name is life. Break every strong shine through the shadows. Burn like Just lift up the name of Jesus. Thank you for that powerful name. The Bible says every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. Thank you that uh, the name of Jesus is powerful to break strongholds. That name is the, the name above every other name. So we come today as we, as we get ready to just transition into another part of the meeting. We just thank you, Jesus. We just say your name. It's wonderful. Thank you for your power and your presence here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone said amen. All right. Grab a seat if you can. Uh, I'm Josh. I lead the team here at Revive. I'm going to welcome up two of our young people. We just got back from youth camp. It's partly why my voice is gone. We had an awesome week at camp, but today we have some of our students involved in the meeting. Let's welcome Aliyah and Isaiah. They're going to share announcements today. Yo, yo, yo. Do you have a mic? Check, 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 check. Good morning, Revive. Good morning. Um, I'm Isaiah. I'm Aaliyah. We just got back from our 2022 Regions Beyond Youth Camp. Woo! It was the best thing ever. It like, was very fun. It was honestly so amazing. Um, hey, Isaiah. Yes? What are you doing a week from today? Here, I'm going to be here. Mm -mm, no, you're not. Then where would I be? So, <laughs> next Sunday, as all of you know, is 4th of July weekend. And so we're, we're going to give you next Sunday off. All right? All right? So you can go have fun. But, hey, there's one condition to this. You have to come to our lake day, which is the Saturday before July 2nd. And we're going to go up at noon o'clock. And um, we're going to be barbecue. And guess what? What? Baptisms. Yeah. Woo! Right? Um, so if you are interested in that, please talk to me and Isaiah in the foyer. Um, but there will be burgers and hot dogs provided. Um, if you guys could bring a side dish, that would be so wonderful. Um, as well as your own chairs. Please bring your own chairs. Okay? And preferably swimming suits and some floaties if you feel like swimming. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Um, Aaliyah, you're yeah. a lady, right? I guess, yeah. Do you like tea? I do. You're in luck. Oh. Because we're going to have a lady summer tea party thingy. What? On Saturday, July 9th from 10 a.m. to noon o'clock. Yes. Um, you have to sign up today. Please do okay. that. Okay. Um, it'll be at the Dodgers home. Dodgers, please stand up. <laughs> we're making you do some work. It'll be there. You guys already know their house. It's great. I've never been there. I'm just saying it. Um, <laughs> Um, for any more information, please talk to Jennifer in the foyer after service today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, also, just a little quick reminder for our softball team. Um, yeah, whoop, whoop. Unfortunately, our games have been canceled the past couple of games due to weather. Um, but good news. We have a makeup game June 30th. So I think it's this Thursday. 
um, at 7.30 at McCormick Field number two. So if you're in our softball game or you just want to come support us, um, 7.30 McCormick Field number two, June 30th, Thursday. Be there, please. Be there or be square. Um, just a few things. Um, Saturday, July 17th, Revive turns 45 years old. What? Whoa! My that dad is pretty cool. My dad's not even that old yet. But. <laughs> um, another thing, I did not choicefully pick this size of shirt. It's the only one they had left. <laughs> um, we're actually going to, real quick, we're going to have Cameron Oliver come up to the stage. Cameron, I don't know where you are right now. Oh, there he is. He's in the back. Please come up here, Cameron. Um, mm. He's going to do a nice conversation about testimonies in camp. Yeah, woo! Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Um, nice to see all of you. Um, if you're one of the youth who wanted to do a testimony, run up to stage quick. We're going to actually we'll line up here. Um, as you heard from Isaiah and Aaliyah, thanks, guys, for the wonderful announcements. Um, we, we just had an amazing week of camp. Um, God just moves. And uh, I think what's so special is that we're doing this as a family of churches, regions beyond. So every year we're growing those connections. We're growing future um, church planters and kingdom expanders. And every year we just build on the next. And God does something different every year. And I feel like a real theme this year came through in our prayer meeting um, was the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And that word was brought a couple times and then... Um, Michael Gleason prayed it this morning in prayer, so God is speaking. But we had a lot of joy, um, and God really moved. But that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to hand off to the youth. If you guys can keep it to, like, you know, 30 seconds a minute, that'll be perfect. No preaching, Indy, okay? I'll, I'll try not to. So my name is Indy, and I went to youth camp, and it was amazing. And I was just, we one night we were talking about speaking in the spiritual language, and then I remember that Fletcher and Mr. Murrow were praying over me, and then I was, we all of us were just crying, and we couldn't stop crying, and then eventually, through my crying, I started saying stuff, and I had no idea what I was saying, so I was kind of freaking out about it, but I just kept saying it, and I just got better and better at it, and then, like I heard my dad say, was, um, it's like learning a new foreign language. The first time, you're not going to be really great at it. You've got to do it more and more, and then eventually you'll get better at it and more comfortable with doing it. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that with all of you. So my testimony is what happened over the whole week. So I think feeling kind of going into camp, I was having these... I was just thinking about my future and stuff like that, and I was not having... I was kind of doubting in it, but not, like, about what's going to happen in the future, but, like... What if I mess it up on the way? Like, what if I have something super cool happening and I mess it up? And so I was going into camp with that question in my mind. And I prayed with about six people over the time of camp. And about every single one of them said something about the, along the lines of this. Jasmine, God has a path for you. And he's not going to let you mess it up. <laughs> so that was just really cool. I just felt that, yeah. Okay, so um, mine might be a little longer than 30 seconds, but let's start out with um, not a testimony, but I talked to a few of the leaders at camp because I live in Moscow, Idaho, and I just moved there a few years ago, and I talked to a few of the leaders about starting a church in Moscow, Idaho. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Something I've been thinking about for a while because I miss this place. <laughs> um, but I think it was... Thursday, I woke up feeling really, really depressed and suicidal, and um, I'm already crying. I didn't trust myself going near the water or even using a fork to eat, so um, I had to be watched the whole day. But around Thursday night when we did our service, um, I had a few leaders pray for me, and towards the end of the praying, after I sobbed for half an hour, everything just lifted off my shoulders, and I went to bed smiling. <laughs> Hi. Hi. My name is Fletcher. Um, church camp was just amazing. And not just for me. I believe it was amazing for everyone. Uh, I was on Team Purple. We got 10th place out of 10 teams. Um, okay, I'm sorry. 
So um, what really stood out to me at camp was Tuesday and Thursday nights. Those nights we just had a ton of prayer and on Tuesday, um, it was just the best thing to be praying over someone. And then that person started speaking in tongues. When they just started pouring it all out to God. And then Thursday, um, for me, it was probably the highlight because um, I would lay my hands on someone and then I found myself prophesying over a couple of people. Um, hello, uh, I'm Bridger, and um, I had a great time at camp, and then one day I went on a canoe out into the lake, and my, the wind blew out my canoe into the middle of the lake, and I couldn't get it back, so then I prayed, and then the wind blew me over to this cabin across the lake, and I got stuck in the marsh. And just as I got stuck there, um, a man drove in, and he helped me get out of the marsh and drove me back to camp. Um, well, my name's Michael, and I was on yellow team, seventh place. Uh, uh, but uh, I think it was like a Wednesday or a Thursday, um, we were talking about like being sharp like an axe like throughout the year and don't get like dull. Um, and I think that just really stuck out to me. And then also, um, I think it was really cool. I think it was also Wednesday or Thursday, I can't remember, but um, the pastor told like all the uh, leaders to pray, like go up in the front and pray, you know, if you need, needed prayer and uh, all the kids started praying for each other so the leaders didn't need to pray. I thought it was really cool. Hi, um, I'm Piper. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I went to camp with kind of low expectations. Like I wasn't, I didn't really expect anything to happen. Um, but so two, uh, Monday, the first day, came and went, and like I remember just standing there and like watching everyone, you know, praying, worshiping. And I felt kind of jealous because like nothing was happening. I was just standing there, like. I don't know. Um, and at that time, I was, like, having a lot of doubts and stuff like that. Um, but the next day, um, when we were all praying and worshiping and stuff at the end of the day, um, I guess I kind of felt just, like, God's presence, like, all around. And that was the coolest feeling, like, feeling so small but also kind of large, but, you know, still small because God is so large. <laughs> Yeah, um, and I don't know. The rest of the week just kind of flew by, and I, I learned a lot about um, God, myself, and stuff like that. And then I learned from camp two very important things, um, for at least for me. Um, the first thing was that you don't have to be perfect in order for um, God. Sorry, I'm shaking right now. Um, for God to uh, work, um, He doesn't favorites you know he's he's gonna um bless you no matter who you are and the second thing I learned was that um uh, sorry I forgot what was it <laughs> I lost that thought you got this you got this sorry Mr. Cameron I'm just like <laughs> um the second thing I learned was that God is not gonna exactly work exactly when you want him to and that's what I thought at first you know I thought that it was, I felt, you know, kind of nervous about that, like, how everyone else was, you know, um, yeah, well, that's all I have to say. <laughs> My name is Maddie, and I went into camp kind of just, like, defeated, and I was, like, not in a good place kind of mentally, and I just, like, wasn't feeling God, and I wasn't making any time for him. He was, like, way in the back. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, yeah, like, I believe in God, and I go to church every Sunday, so, you know, that's good enough, um, and I wasn't, like, I never read my Bible. I, like, 
would, you know, pray, and I'd kind of have this attitude like, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian, I'm kind of great, you know, kind of like that, but I really didn't pursue a relationship with God, and I went to camp, and then I was like, you know what, this year, I'm done with that, I'm going to go in, and I'm going to ask for the Spirit, and like, be fulfilled, and the first night, I like, asked like three people to pray for me, and I like, could feel God around, and you could definitely see him moving through all the youth, but I just like, I didn't feel like, I'd see people like starting to speak in tongues and like different things, and I was like, I'm not good enough. Like I'm doing something so wrong, or what I've done in the past. Like God's just like, no, I'm not going to use you. And like that was definitely the devil. Like that's not true. And then somebody prayed over me and was like, you know what? You've been filled with the Spirit, and I know it. It's just not your time yet, and you have to trust in God's plan. And I was like, you know what? That's so true. Like I just have to trust in God's plan. And then I just. Like, I'd never felt, like, the overwhelming joy that I felt at camp. Like, when I'm surrounded by God's presence, like, I'm so happy. And and then the last night at camp, I was, like, on a high. And I was like, yes, I'm so happy and everything. And that night, like, I was laying in bed, and God, like, I just was like, no, nothing happened. I'm not filled. I'm nothing. And I feel like crap. And then God gave me this image that I was laying in bed and I was just being attacked. Like, like little devils were like just coming and whispering things in my ear just to defeat me. And then I just had to like go in prayer and be like, no, that's not true. Because what God prays over me and prophesies over me, that's not, the devil can't mess with that. And you know, he doesn't have any power over me. He just whispers lies in my head. And I just had to be like, no, I got to give it to God because that's not true. And Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> that's what I had <laughs> well done guys well done hey um, we're going to take one one moment if you just close your eyes and um, you can put your hands out in front of you and Fletch is just going to pray uh, maybe there's some of us this morning we just need to receive joy and we need to be reminded of the joy of the Lord and Fletch is going to pray that over us this morning thank you dear heavenly father um, I thank you for this church and for all the people in it I pray that you would Put joy into every person, into every person's spirit, Lord God. Just help them to feel your presence, the joy of living, Lord God. Um, I pray that we could continue to worship you and love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well done, you guys. Bless you. Well done. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if, could we also just give a quick hand to Cameron? He planned this all. Yeah. And um, it's just so cool to see, like I've grown up with half of the, my friends and half the youth here, and just to see how many of them stepped out of their comfort zones this week and how far God has grown, I mean, yeah, grown them, and it's just, I don't know, it's, it's such a blessing to see that, and, to, you know, just to see it, yeah, but, um, so we're going to do um, tithe and offering quick, and just so you parents know, for any kids, we are having class so you guys can meet out at the stairs over there. <laughs> um, and then we're going to have like a five quick minute mingle time. And then, uh, yeah. So, um, Real quick, I was also on the yellow team. We got seventh. They cheated, though, so we should have won. Um, just mentioning it. Um, yeah, we're going to give an opportunity to give. We have offering heart boxes up here in the front, box in the back. And you can um, do it online. May I have everyone stand up, please? I'll say one last prayer before our five-minute break. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you, Lord, for everything you have done for us. Thank you for going into these kids' hearts during camp, Lord, and showing them who you really are. And um, letting everyone see the power of you, Lord. Um, I had such a great time at camp. I feel like everyone else did. Um, People coming out of their comfort zones, Lord, and worshiping, people losing their voices. Um, (laughs) Thank you, Lord, for just showing everything that you can do and being a part of these people's lives, Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right, cue mingle time. My mic is off.
We have a real treat today. We have our good friend, Clem Ferris, all the way from North Carolina. Uh, he lives near, uh, his church is near Chapel Hill, which if you're a Tar Heel fan, you'll know where that is. Uh, I met Clem, <clears throat> uh, was a speaker for a Montana Shepherds Conference, we think around 2015-ish, can't remember exactly. Uh, Clem travels full-time in ministry, has a great teaching, great prophetic gift. Uh, Clem helps oversee one of my favorite churches over in Helena, where my uh, friends pastor over at Mount Helena. So Clem's in Montana a few times a year, but he was a real blessing for uh, our young people. And uh, I did want to brag on our, our, just before Clem comes up to preach, one last brag on our students. We receive an offering every year at camp that goes to missions or goes somewhere outside of the state. And we give, typically outside of the state, but we gave to a church. We wanted to give it to a new church plant that's a Regents Beyond plant in Brazil. And so we shared briefly about that. Uh, all the kids stood up. We prayed for this new church that's starting uh, through our friends down there. And the kids came up with the leaders at camp. They gave over $4,200. <laughs> <laughs> So amazing. Um, so that was a huge blessing for me. Uh, Clem, uh, you guys are going to enjoy Clem. I want to just get out of the way so he has time today. But let's welcome Clem Ferris as he comes and brings the word. Thank you, Josh. Give it up for your pastor and his wife and their great kids. Wow. Everything rises and falls on leadership, said John Maxwell. Amen. I think he's St. John Maxwell by now. Everybody quotes him more than the Apostle Paul. But anyway, um, boy, I've had a great week with your young people and, and all the counselors, everybody that made it happen. Just give them a hand, all the counselors and Cam's leadership and getting to see. These kids just went for it. It was amazing. We did have an amazing time. I, was, uh, I sent an email out to Cam and Josh and uh, JR and John Meek uh, last Wednesday. I was in prayer for the camp, and I just felt like... They got to connect with the Holy Spirit, you know, because the theme was interfacing with God. You can't have an interface if you don't have the right conduit, right? So they got to know the Holy Spirit personally. And, and God just came down and these kids responded. So well done, moms and dads. Keep it going. Keep the fire burning. Amen. Keep it burning. Uh, as I said to the kids, you know, God gave his greatest gift to us, Jesus Christ, right? Jesus turns around and gives his greatest gift to us the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit turns around and gives his greatest gift, the power to communicate with God directly, spirit to spirit, spiritual language. And out of that comes his other gifts. And I'll tell you what, heaven came down and it's not going to go back. Let me say, don't go back, all right? Well, we're getting, this is a tiny little pulpit. How cute. The cross is awesome. The cross is awesome, but it's like, okay, I'm sure glad I don't have one of those big Dake concordances to put up here. All right. All right, this, uh, you were doing a series. By the way, yeah, I live in North Carolina. Well, I have a house in Durham, North Carolina. I live on Delta Airlines. But anyway, um, we, uh, you'll hear a little bit of my testimony and, and what I'm going to share today. But um, yeah, we, we're out of a, a great church called Grace Church. And uh, it's, uh, it's over 40 years old. And uh, thank God for the pioneers of the charismatic movement that went out and planted churches, you know, and boom, busted open. Um, Steve Valentine and... a uh, Dear, dear friend of mine that I worked with for 35 years, Dr. Steve Crowther, we pastored in Florida together. They were both out of Abbott Loop, um, and Steve became the president of our Bible college, and we've worked together for 35 years. He just joined Steve in heaven, darn it. Uh, he just passed away of cancer just a few months ago. But uh, So there's a long history that I've had with uh, those guys from Abbott Loop, and I was used to being part of MFI, and then part of LifeLinks Network in Canada, where I met all the Helena guys. And so uh, all that to say that, that I'm old. Okay. <laughs> 